like I said, there, faith isn't above facts. A fact is true, and faith is faith, and we put our faith in the truth, right? So, you know, as, as children of God, we're supposed to be walking in truth. And when we have evidence and we have facts and we know that things are true, we need to use those things. And we need to get some understanding and some education also. This is important. We, you know, it's great. You know, everyone that puts their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Right? You're saved, child of God. Awesome. And, and I want to see as many people as possible. But if we're going to be more effective, we need to get education. We need to get wisdom. We need to get understanding. We need to start learning and, and understanding the way things work and the way things operate and the way things have operated. We need to learn history. We need to learn a lot of things to be more effective in general. I mean, the more truth that you have, the more knowledge that you have, the better you're going to be at convincing people on a variety of subjects. Now, what we're covering this morning is found uh, in the title of the verse is coming from Matthew chapter 4. Look at verse number 4 is when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness by Satan. Jesus answered Satan here, he says, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And I say, amen. I love this verse. And I love using this verse to prove and to teach that God has preserved his word and, and continues to preserve his word in perpetuity because how can we possibly, you know, live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God unless we have every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, right? I mean, that, that just makes sense. And 100% without fail, we have that in the King James Version of the Bible. It's been a while since I preached a sermon on the King James, and it's an important truth. This has come up recently. I've been talking to someone at work about this subject. And to be honest with you, this is a deep subject. There's a lot of things involved in this subject, and even with him, you know, I'm telling them, you know, look it up. You could, you could find a lot of information out there. Uh, this is not something that I can just tell you, you know, just take five minutes and explain all the details behind the subject of, of you know, the, where the Word of God comes from, how it's been passed down through history, through to the translations, and what we have today in English. And there's a lot of argumentation all along the way. But... One thing's for certain is that God has promised to preserve his word, that we know that the words of the Lord are pure words, and we know that he is responsible for keeping them, and that we can see this evidence of preservation all throughout the scripture. Now, before I get even any further on this, because this is undoubtedly a, a foundational element of our faith that we stand on here at Stronghold Baptist Church, that the King James Bible is the inerrant Word of God preserved for us 100% perfectly in the English language for us today, and that is the only version of the Bible that we recognize, and um, it is 100% true. Now, I also want to just point out, though, the carefulness, and I've done this in many other sermons in the past as well, of how literally we want to take things. When we're studying our Bibles, when we're looking at doctrines, when we're studying everything out, how literal. First of all, we want to say, you know, in general terms, I still use the phrase. I tell people, you know what, we, we believe the Bible literally. People say, well, what, what makes your church different? Or what you, well, we, we just believe the Bible literally. Is there anything wrong with saying that? No, of course not. There's nothing wrong with saying you believe the Bible literally. Because what you mean by that is saying... There's a, you know there's a lot of churches out there that try to make excuses for passages. The Bible clearly makes a statement, but then people don't like what it says, so they try to come up with other ways of spinning it and changing it to mean something different than what it actually says. So when we say you believe the, word, the Bible is literally true, of course you believe it's literally true. If it says something, it, it basically it's going to mean what it says. Now, when you start digging, that's a great general statement, but as you start digging, you're going to find some areas of Scripture where there may be hyperbole being used, there may be some, you know, maybe exaggeration, and it's, and it's part of the language. It's part of the way it's written, and it's, and it's designed to get points across, which is why we have to use discernment and understanding when reading the Bible so that we come across with the right 
meaning. 